4.1 inverse functions. First of all, let's look at a regular function, then we'll look at the inverses. This will be for the regular function versus the new guy, the inverse function. And we indicate that we're using the inverse function by using the negative 1 on a function. Typically, negative 1 um, tells you that the base is being made into a reciprocal. When you put a negative 1 with an f, a function, should I say, it says instead that we're using the inverse function. Now, functions give you, uh, take input and give you output. Let's say we're looking at the uh, space shuttle. The space shuttle has plenty of equations that keep up with um, different aspects. There's one equation, as you input time, um, it tells you how far the shuttle is off the ground. There's another function that as you input time, it'll tell you um, how much fuel is left for the space shuttle. So the output there is fuel. Well, the inverse function allows you to change the input and the output or reverse them. So now you can actually put in a fuel amount and get the time that you should have for that fuel. Or you can put in as an input a distance and get the time at which your shuttle should be. So it gives you a new function that gives you a reverse of time and distance or let's say time and fuel. So if we had a function here and the input was 0, output 3, input 5, output 5, input 10, output 7, input 15, output 9, the reciprocal function would do this. I'm oh, sorry, the, um, the um, inverse function, should I say. Would have 3 is the input, 0 is the output, 5 will be the input, 5 will be the output, 7 would be the input, 10 is an output, 9 is an input, and 15 is an output. Now that's what it physically does. It actually changes the input to the output and output to the input. So what, you, what we're getting here is a um, exchange, the domain and the range exchange roles. Okay. So, let's look at what's happening graphically. Graphically, your original function has a 0, 3. There. It has a 5, 5. It has a 10, 7. And it has a 15, 9. Again, all the way from our 0, 3 over to our 15, 9. And let's trace this guy back. It's a little linear. Now, if we want to trace the inverse function, this is what we see. Instead of a 0, 3, we would have a 3, 0. We would still have our 5, 5, but here we would have the 7, 10, and finally, here, we would have our 9, 15. And this is the appearance of the inverse function. Now, before we had talked about three types of um, reflections. We talked about reflections about the x-axis, that will flip down like a book. A reflection across the y-axis, which flips like a page in a book. We also talked about a reflection about the origin. Kind of looks like you're spinning it around the middle here, about 180 degrees. The fourth type of reflection that we have is a reflection across the diagonal. That diagonal looks like this. y equals x is the diagonal. Okay. This is our fourth type of reflection. And we get the reflection of a, uh, across the diagonal from the inverse function. So if you were looking at an original function, the graph of original function, you could create the inverse graph simply by making the in sorry, the diagonal and then flipping everything across. I'll give you an example.
let's say we were looking at this function right here. This is from our old buddy um, x cubed. And we wanted to create the um, inverse function. Well, or we'll draw a diagonal. That's y equals x. And then we'll begin to flip the um, graph over the um, diagonal. Essentially get a reflection across the diagonal. So, this piece right here will flip over to this side, and we'll get this. This hump right here will flip over to the other side, and we'll get that. Third piece is here. We'll flip this hump here, down here. And finally, this little corner here, we're going to flip on top here. This function here is the inverse function. And you'll notice that it also happens to look like the cube root function. And it is the cube root function. Now we'll look at a one-to-one -one function. To be a one-to-one -one function, the original equation is proved to be a function. And its inverse has also got to be proved a function. So if you can demonstrate the original is a function, the inverse is also a function, then you can say the function f is 1 to 1.